guys, welcome to another one of our reviews. I'm a worm, this is the Proton. Uh, today we're going to be doing a mechanical mod of which we did receive free of charge that will not affect our review in any way, shape or form. Today's mod is from vapegear.co.uk. Indeed. Um, today we are doing the UD, UDT V14. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. So yeah, UD V14 um, from uh, Vape Gear. Uh, 39.99 this one guys, um, it's a mechanical mod, we're going to do a little close up for you just to show what you can get um, and yeah basically I think we'll just chuck straight down into that now, get it done and then we'll come back up to us and have a flabbery doogan. <laughs> Worms being a bad end guys, <laughs> uh, right this is a quick close up of the UD TV 14 so we'll get straight into it, um, nice presentation from UD now, uh, so yeah it's all good stuff, um, inside mod, very simple stuff, you've got a bit of spec about the mod. Um, Stainless steel and copper construction, 23.5mm, I think that's to the locking ring, no, height is redonkulous, it's pretty big, gives you a current three to seven, uh, 5 to 7 amps, um, I mean you can definitely put that more than that for it, I would imagine anyway. Is it brass? Um, well no, it says copper and stainless steel. It's really brass on this thing. It may well do, we don't know what the material is guys, we'll come back up to us and have a proper look, we'll have a look at the listing, I think one might be loading it now. Um, 35650, um, Preferred performance on voltage drop, so basically saying no voltage drop and then no spark when firing, so saying she's not going to get arcing issues. Um, with this new UD stuff, including the Argo T4, you open up the back and whoosh, there you go, you've got some spares. Lovely. What have we got here? We've got, well, you'll see what that's for in a second, but that's part of your switch assembly, so it's a spare bit for your switch assembly. Um, but we'll get into that, so yeah. Just good nice. guys, it's brass with brushed bronze, bronze plated. And yet this is stainless steel. We don't know, guys. I might scratch it up in a minute and find out. Um, but yeah, it's nice. You get a bit of packaging and whatever else. So we'll move off the packaging onto the mod. Um, as you can see, it's kind of it's, it's sold to have that kind of tarnished, patinaed kind of effect going on as it is. Uh, we'll, st we'll just take it apart and pick up one piece at a time. So, top cap, top tube, bottom tube, and then switch. We'll start with the tubes that are the easiest. Uh, top tube, this is just to give you your 650. Um, you're not going to get your 350 off this because it's just you might not want your cookie. You might do, I don't know, maybe you won't. Um, right, anyway, guys, uh, that's just top tube just to give you your 650 option. That's all that is, fairly simple stuff. There's your 350 tube. Um, you've got some venting on the body there and there, and this has actually got part of the switch still in it. Okay, this is something we'll get to in a second, but that is part of the switch as well, so it is a tube all the way through. Um, we'll leave the switch for a moment and go on to the head, I suppose. Um, as far as atomizer head goes, 23mm-ish across, um, but I mean you've got the sort of wells and sort of bulges here and there making it wider in places, so that is what it is. Um, air paths at the top to give you your air feed, so you can flush mount, awesome source. And then in here you've got a Chiyu style adjustment, so if you undo the top one it changes for your uh, for your atomizer connection and then that there adjusts for your battery rattle. Um, what these are I'm not sure, I mean these don't feel like stainless steel these contacts but they may very well be silver plated, they, they, they look silver plated to me anyway. So um, yeah awesome source for that if that is the case. Right, onto the switch. Now the switch is a bit of a complicated setup so what you've got, let's start here, this is a bit that stayed in the tube first of all, it's double threaded both sides You've got your top contact there, which is actually negative contact for your battery. And as you're under here, you've got an extended steel or yeah, it looks like stainless steel to me arm, and then it touches the bottom of the contact. So basically, it pushes down, and that's where your contact's made like that as you're pushing the switch. So the top of the switch is actually insulated. So that's not that's not obviously metal. Why they did that, I'm not entirely sure, but sure, surely it's people use it. Possibly to stop a hot button issue. Um, now you've just got a hot face issue, I suppose, if it goes. <laughs> um, and then actually into the switch itself, it's not particularly complicated. The, the insulated part at the top screw threaded, just a little bit of one of them. Um, and then you undo, and it will pop out if you give it a little shake, maybe. Let's just unscrew it. Unscrew here. Get there eventually. Okay, that's a top plate of switch, locking ring, and then you've got your button itself. The button itself has got a little scorpion on the bottom. Um, it's actually indented this button. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it has actually got an indent um, for your finger. Whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but that is what it is. Um, and then put it back together, screw her up, make sure you've got the well 
sort of facing towards the bottom where your button's going to be. Push your spring back in. Now I found that you line it up. I took this apart the other day and took me about five minutes to get it together. There you go. If they line it up quite spot on, it's quite a tight fit, uh, and then just screw that back on. So that still though isn't isn't your fully assembled switch, because then you have to put this piece on. But this piece kind of does come undone. So you've got a when you're putting this on the bottom of the mod, you kind of screw in that into there like that, and then you've got three places it can undo. You can undo there on the locking switch. You can undo there, and then it can undo from the actual base itself. So it's a bit annoying that none of it's sort of reverse threaded in that regard. Anyway. Um, as far as the switch goes, long travel, I mean it is a, it's a very long travel, like it doesn't look as long as it feels but yeah it feels long. Um, screw that back up, chuck that back on so when you've got your Atty in, I mean there's plenty of room there but I've found I'd never need that much room, I mean you could probably get a kick in there quite happily I'd imagine, um, whether you'd be able to use it with one with that adjustment, who knows but um, yeah, you probably still there's still enough room in there for a kick. I just don't know whether you'd be able to make it work. Uh, and then unscrew connection there, screw it down, and then we flush obviously with an eight on top. Very quick look, guys, um, at what we got, uh, and then we're gonna come back up to us, and we're gonna have a vape and a chat about it. Hi guys, that was the up close of the UDT version 14 or something VV. I don't know, say 14. UDT V14. V14. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, we had a little. Um, not sure whether it's stainless steel or brass. We scratch tested it on the inside of the tube. It's definitely brass. So I say brass with bronze plate, uh, brush plated around the top of the eagle. Yeah. Brass, it says, what it says on, on vape gear is uh, brass with brushed bronze plated. Um, it's, this, this is what it is, we don't know. We're it's made of brass. The ring is stainless steel because it looks stainless steel for us and uh, that's probably what it's referring to, but it's definitely brass. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, vouch for it hitting extremely hard, so it's more than likely is brass. Oh, so the yeah, scratch yeah. tested this anyway. So, but yeah, just wanted to clear that. So some useful information for once. You know, we, we try every now and then. <laughs> Semi useful. Um, yeah. So thirty nine ninety nine from Vape Gear for this mechanical mod. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. This. I mean, looks wise, it's very weird. I mean, you are going around the sort of weird looks way of things recently, anyway. But this is unlike sort of some other stuff that's out there, you know, in this price range anyway. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of cool to doing something different. You've got sort of a brushed bronze brass dingle going on with some stainless steel along the bottom. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not bad. And in terms of width, along the actual top, we're looking just over 22 mil as opposed to 23 like a six, I'm a liar. But on the measurements, it does say 23 mil and a half. So I think that's, that is why at this point it's gonna be 23 mil, but you're looking at the, pretty much the top cap. Top, and it's basically. It's 22, 22 and a smidge. And a smooth rule. Um, so yeah, that's what you're going to get. Um, the it's kind of a, a weird at the top and at the bottom. It's all kind of different. Like you've got Chiu style adjustment up the top here. It's like a Pat style switch almost down the bottom. Um, so yeah, it's a bit weird. The one thing I will say about the switch, I mean, without going into a complicated, complicated mechanism, which I don't doubt we will go over quickly, but the the throw, I mean, with the Paps, I mean, Paul's got a Paps worm, whatever. Has got a Paps, and you can you can use you know you can. You can use that to fire it, you know, against the finger. You can't do that with this. It's just the throw is too long. You have to use a, finger fire. An index finger, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, no, no doubt we can probably work our way out to shortening that. Um, I did. I did actually shorten it um, with an O-ring the other day, and I've, I've, I've taken it out since. Um, pretty much how we always do ours, anyway. Pretty much. But I found that when you shortened it, the problem was is that this was still. That up in there, so you still, you know, you haven't got the reach on you. I mean, I've got big fingers, and still, I mean, to get this to no, it's just not. You can't do your little fingers, eh? little finger, maybe. You can do your little finger, but it's, it's, uh, it's gonna get uncomfortable over time. It's definitely uncomfortable, though, no. So, you've got no choice really but to sort of middle fire this, and I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's fine, that's not, that's not a serious problem, but. You know that is what it is. Well, um, it's kind of how I use my mechanicals anyway, with my middle finger anyway. So um, another thing with the switch, I mean the 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 actual locking ring itself is really long. So I mean the mod in general is the whole thing is long. To be honest, I mean if you see that gap there, that's pretty much how long the throw is. Yeah, that's how much it feels like. It's huge. It, it is a huge throw, um, but it is it's a long old mod. It's a fairly heavy beastie, but it's just the size in general. If you're after something small, even in 350, you're not getting it because of how it's designed. That's just how it is. Um, but the other thing with the switch is, 
you know, as I said in the review, I mean, I go on to unlock that there and I'm unlocking this part, you know, that actually disconnects the entire switch for once. And then other times you'll undo it and it goes to undo the, the stainless steel bit that's attached to that. So it'll leave the top part of the switch in the mod, but then you'll get the locking ring, the firing button, and that stainless steel section with the extension in it. So the, the switch itself, some of that, I mean, if nothing else, the top part of the switch should be reverse threaded just to make it not annoying. That's the most annoying thing with this because. The threads are nice and smooth, but because of that, you just you undoing the switch whenever you try and look off. You've got your pinky fingers involved, and you're trying to hold it. And to be fair, though, against this mod, because it is an inset button where you have to push internally into the actual body, you don't need to use the locking ring as often as you would on many other mods. Mm. So I think uh, the reason they didn't do put reverse threading on there because it obviously does bump up prices a lot of the time because you've got to get it machined and all that. But because you don't really need to use the locking ring when you're at home and about on that because it's just going to sit on your desk or on its side. It's not going to worry, it's only going to be when you're transporting it, maybe in your ego case or your pocket or whatever, that you're going to need to use that locking ring. It's going to be like once or twice a day that you're going to be using it. So, yes, it is a pain in the ass that it's not reverse threaded, but is it a downside to the mod? Fractionally. Because it's which one of those mods that is hitting so hard, you kind of forget about its little flaws, you know? It's, it's like anything. You find something that's really good, there's always something wrong with something, but how it, how it performs dictates how much you love it. And I think with this thing, it does hit extraordinarily hard. I mean, it's just beyond a joke. I mean, you, we, we had th this tank on a different device before, and it was hitting nowhere to what it is now. So you, you kind of got, you, got, you give it one hand, you take it with the other, as uh, Mr. Bottle says quite often to me. So, you know, it is what it is, one of those things. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why I was talking about how hard it hits. We haven't actually done the tanko test on it, to be honest with you. We haven't got it with us, so we can't. Um, all I can say so is this is not a fresh charged battery. This battery has been used and abused a bit and um, it's still hitting very hard. Um, in comparison to like, other mods, I mean, I was using the Stingray uh, clone, which hits hard anyway. Um, and I have same battery, same tank, just transferred over into this mod because it arrived. Uh, and instantly there was a, a noticeable difference in how hard it hits. I mean, there always is with a brand new mod versus one that's been used a bit, especially since I'm not the best for maintaining contacts. But they had, it had re actually it had been recently been cleaned. Yeah, we don't um, in a week. So I noticed straight away that this was hitting hard, you know, so that's definitely a thumbs up for this, um, which is cool. Um, so we're going to 5.8R? Yeah, we'll do it, yeah. 5.8R. Looks. <laughs> not for me. Uh, it's, it's not one that I would lean towards in any way, shape or form. Why I like them, like really shiny brass, because I kind of keep my brass kind of cleaned all the time. Or... I just don't like the look of it. It's, it's just it's just garish in so many wrong places. It's just like ripped in all the wrong places, ladies. <laughs> it, it has got some kind of weird like I mean I mean you see it in a close up, but we'll go over it again, like you've got that that at the top, the kind of all the way around the top cap, then it goes in to a bulge, which is obviously where your connection's made, it comes down, and then there's a like a little sort of indent all the way around there, and down you've got stainless steel and you've got a bottom cap that's kind of got that going on. Yes. It's a very mismatch kind of mod. Um, I don't so know why they put the stainless steel ring on there. I mean, I would have just kept it looking the same. It would have been just a complete mod then. But yeah, for me, it looks. I mean, it's not overly garish. It's just not my preference. So I'm just going to give it a seven because it's, it's not bad looking. It's just not somewhere I would lean towards. Um, looks for me. Sorry, guys. I've also got in there. If you can just just about see it, UDs on there. Um, looks for me. I mean, the finish I like. I, it feels very nice, and I like the look of that kind of brushed effect. I just don't like what it's sitting on. To be honest with you, um, I think that you know the top cap here and all this kind of hoo ha that's going on down here, they've gone a bit too far, I think, with, with what they're what they're intending to do. Um, so that finish on another mod, I mean, that finish on a Nemesis, for example, would look awesome, you know, that kind of thing. But for me, um, looks wise, it's going to get a six. I don't think it's my, it's definitely not my style anyway. And I mean, venting sort of just holes in the body and stuff. We've kind of the mods have progressed to a stage now where you, you don't need a necessarily really complicated switch like this has got, you just vent it through the switch and people tend to prefer the, the hidden venting, which I am one of them, one or another. If you can hide it, hide it. If you can't, then you can't. But um, yeah, it looks to me, I'm going to give it a six just because it's not, not really my thing. Uh, usability. Um, like we said with this one, you've got a little bit of uh, teething issues with getting used to the switch on this one because there are multiple parts to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a downside because to be honest, you can the more you can take this switch apart, the more you can modify it to your preference. I mean, for us, that's a good thing. For some people out there, it's not going to be so much of a good thing. Some people just like to get a mod and that's how they use it. Done job. But for us, we kind of like the fact you can take the switch apart and you can see everything that's going on in there. That kind of appeals to our tinkering side. Uh, but other than that, um, 
the, the usability, you've got the adjustment uh, on the 510, which is the same as the GU, which is awesome. We love that thing, uh, especially the adjustment on it, because you can get any battery fitting flush on anything. So that's always good. So the usability, just because of the switch, because it can be a little bit of a getting used to kind of couple of day kind of remembering to do it every time. It's going to get a seven. Um, usability for me, I mean the adjustment from a Chi style adjustment is what we're going to call it. Um, it's not the most unusable, but equally it's not the most usable either. Um, but this is particularly good. It's not like I mean we've got a couple of Chi U clones um, and. On that, as your sort of certain batteries you screw it up, and it will take the adjustment up with it. So you, you you never quite get that kind of flush as it should be. And there are certain batteries with cheers as well that that thing is hanging on in there by a quarter of a thread, like skin of its teeth. Whereas this, that isn't a problem. Same batteries, and it's actually got a longer distance to travel as well than it has in the cheat. And it's, it, it's every time it's making contact with even our smallest battery. So, I mean, the the connection at the top is, is solid. Um, the switch is a bit complicated, um, unnecessarily complicated, should we say? I mean. It's not like there aren't complicated switches out there, because there are, there are plenty. I mean, the Stingray is a very kind of innovative and complicated switch, and Nemesis isn't the most simple switch either. Um, but they make sense for the purpose they serve, you know, whereas this, I don't get why why extend the negative down with that arm and then use a bit of dough to push the contact. Why not just give yourself the contact in the switch? I mean, I'm guessing it's something to do with making it hit harder, because if that's the case, it definitely works. But the other thing is the hot button issue that you do get sometimes, especially when you're running like low reg with 30 amp batteries and that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose, but it's just, I don't know, the switch seems a little bit... Overformed. Too much, yeah, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of the, I know I said the button's got kind of a dip in it, and, and it has very fractionally, but I'm not a big fan of that either, I like the button to be flat. Um, the spring tension, the spring's actually not very tensioned at all, it's quite an easy spring to push, and again, I prefer a slightly firm push. Um, so you, I mean, usability in general, though you stick a battery in it and you adjust it all, I'm going to give it an A. It's not hard to use necessarily, but there's there's niggles, you know. Uh, maintenance. I mean, it's a mechanical mod. Clean your threads and clean the contacts. I mean, at least on this switch, you can get to the contacts extremely easy. So the contacts down the bottom and the actual switch are going to be easy to clean compared to some other ones that are out there. You have to completely take apart to get to the actual bit that's going to make contact with the battery. This, no problem. Uh, so for maintenance, I'm going to give this one a 10. This one is going to be extremely easy to maintain. Because it's got that um, kind of dirty brush look to it, you ain't even got to clean this one. It's just, that's how it's meant to look, dirty. So yeah. Um, maintenance for me, I mean, like as well, so you're not really going to have to polish it. Um, so that's not, that's not a bad thing at all. Um, and other than that, any mods, just contact clean and you know, making sure it does what it's supposed to do, so keeping it all tight together. Maintenance is getting a 10. It's not going to be hard to maintain this mod, same as it's all mods. So. Uh, Price and build quality. Uh, price, all UD stuff is good value for its money. It's, it's just the way it's always been. There's nothing UD that you can not justify the money that you're paying for it. I mean, they take their atomizers and that all worth their money. This is no exception. It's 40 quid, which is bog standard for a, an average kind of mechanical mod out there. Especially the, UD. Yeah. This one hits really, really hard. Yes, okay, the looks is going to be kind of a by user kind of thing, but if you like the look of it, you're going to love this thing for 40 quid. It's, it hits really hard. You've got so much adjustment in there, you just got to get kind of used to the switch. So, I mean, for the price, I'm going to give it a 10. Uh, the build quality of it, the, it is built exceptionally well. It's a 10. It's just that switch just niggles. I mean, maybe they could make it a little bit tighter or, I don't know, just make it so it doesn't fall apart so easy when you're trying to do the locking ring. That's the only niggle I've got of it, but it's still a 10. There you go. Um, build quality and price. I mean, build quality itself, it just feels fairly well built. It's not a light mod. Um, I mean, all the screw threads have said are pretty, pretty decent. Um, I would say it's not built too badly at all. The, the, the locking switch, kind of, I don't know, it feels a little bit cheap, I guess. Not really, but you know, a little bit. Um, but in terms of build quality, I think it's built fairly well. And for 40 quid, I mean, I think the price is relevant to what you're paying. I mean, it's, it's definitely not my preference. But I mean, for 40 quid, I don't think you're getting a bad deal at all. I mean, it's the same kind of price as the Sigurdi 19 was and all them. I mean, around that ballpark anyway. So, um, yeah, I think for 40 quid, it's not bad. So, I'm going to give it a sort of an 8 or a 9 for build quality versus price. I think you're getting a, a fairly decent mod for it. Uh, overall, um, my overall marking of this mod is going to sit somewhere between an 8 and an 8.5. Just kind of, it's just that switch. It's just, um, yes, I like the fact that I can get in there and it's appealing to my tinker side, but the fact it comes apart so easy is by far its biggest downfall. I mean, 
looks and everything else is nothing compared to just that switch. It's just if there was some way of maybe reverse threading or just maybe make those threads a little bit tighter and grip a little bit more so that you didn't fall apart so easily. So you had to get a little bit of grip on the individual parts when you take the switch apart, but it will screw in and screw out fine, then that would have been fine. But it's just that that one thing that is just letting it down for me on this mod. And I, I know it hits really well and for that. It's epic, it's an epic mod, and for 40 quid you can't go wrong with it. Especially if you want a hard hitting child placing mod, this is something that's going to hit really hard and put that current through the uh, the wire that you're using at the time. So, it is, you, you kind of got a give and take with this one. It's like, it's good, you just got to bear in mind that switch. There you go. Um, for me, overall, I'm kind of torn. Um, my overall is going to be a 7, uh, just because it's not necessarily my preference, and I, I'm not be a fan of every time I go to lock that switch, it undoes. And it's not, as well said, it's not something you necessarily have to do because you can sit it down and all that kind of stuff. But instinctively, if I stop using the mod, I lock my switch, even if I'm putting it down on the desk. So that in itself becomes an annoyance because I'm going, okay, lock it, and then I'm going, oh, bollocks, and I'm having to do this or whatever. So that is kind of turned me one way. The other, the other part of it is it hits hard. I mean, it hits really hard. So I, I like mods that hit hard. I didn't expect this one to hit as hard as it does, um, to be honest with you, because there's a few mods that I can pick up at the minute that feel like it's, they're delivering like this. Um, and from UD as well, you kind of, after what, Sigilly 19, it was suffering quite a large drops and, you know, all that kind of, them kind of mods, they, they weren't hitting stupidly hard, whereas this, this really does hit nicely. So, um, yeah, for that in itself, I like it. Um, other than that, I mean, looks wise, it's going to be totally down to you guys and, and what you want to do and what you like. It's one of them, it's not necessarily my thing, so that's why it's getting a 7. But um, yeah, I'll definitely use it to, to cloud chase because of how hard it hits. That's, that's going to be the sole purpose of this one. I think it's going to be a cloud chasing cloud chasing mod because there aren't, I can't see anything on that table over there that, that's going to hit harder than this at the minute. So yeah, that's my overall for this one as a 7. Um, it's not that it's a bad one anyway, it's just not. No, oh, I, I mean, I, I do just want to reiterate, because that front button's got such a long throw, you might not even, I mean, you're better off locking off your switch when you put it in your pocket, but I don't think you necessarily have to. I mean, I'm not recommending it in any way, shape or form, because if you do that and your battery vents, not my fault. No. But what I'm saying is that you could probably get away with it if you forgot. I mean, it's not one of those ones where you're, it's got like a touch sensor sort of thing. This is a long throw, so you could get away with roughing it around a little bit without locking off that switch before it's going to activate, activate your device. Mm, you have got to push in firmly in the centre of this switch. I mean, you will fire it on the edge, but to get that sort of full bump, you do feel like you have to push in the centre, and you do feel like you have to push a little bit hard once it, has to, it makes the contact to get it. So, I mean, that I can balance that on my thumb now. That the switch is fully depressed, and it's not firing. So, I mean, it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all, and it's not that it's a bad mod, like we said, but it's just not... Not there, it's you not, know. It's not ideal. No, it's not there. I mean, you do your experience company now as well, and some of the atomizers they're showing out now are the bollocks. Um, so I think what they've gone with this one is just they've gone for pure maximum hit and kind of forgot about everything else a little bit. So it's the styling and the yeah. styling thing. I mean, you know, they're making some awesome looking atomizers now. I mean, the, the T4 um, on top of a Stingray was one of the best looking, if not the best looking setup I've held this year, um, and loved it. So. Just they need to transfer some of that design in terms of appearance from them atomizers to these mods in order it's to make a them different section. I mean, I'm thinking of UD products, and I can't think of any UD product that the person who designed this thought that was going to be going. With. <laughs> I mean, you know, you tend to make mods that fit with your atties, and their atties are stainless steel, they're always polished. Give us a polished bloody mod. Um, 22 will be lovely. This is where their atomizers are going, so it doesn't make sense to me that that's not what their mods are doing. I mean, actually, I mean, it might just be me, but that's, that's so maybe they're coming out with something in the future. We don't know. Uh, we, we never do know. We, we, we take every day by ear. But um, obviously, we want to say a big thank you to Vape Gear, Keith, and Kirsty. Mainly Kirsty, as always. Of course. <laughs> um, they'll be up here and down here, guys, if you want to go and check them out. They're adding new stuff as well. So, um, yeah, definitely keep an eye on Vape Gear as well because some new UD products that are coming out soon, and I really want them. <laughs> and I'd imagine Vape Gear going to be stuck in them. So, yeah, coming soon, um, I'd imagine. And yeah, obviously, big thanks to Keith and Kirsty, of course, for sending it down to us. Uh, we're pretty much done here. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. I've been Mr. Proton. This has been The Worm. We shall see you soon.